In this video, we're going to talk about some of the methods of the list control on a UX component that allow us to get information about the current selection in the list. So you can see we have a simple list over here, and this list has been configured to allow uh, multiple rows to be selected. So there you can see I've selected one row, and if I hit the control key, I can select a second row. So the list itself, you can see, has been configured to display some static data. The static data is just uh, first name, last name, city and state. And then we've also specified that the list should return the value from the last name column. And then we check the multi-select property over here, which allows us to select more than one row at a time in the list. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually run this list in Firefox, where we have the Firebug add-in installed. And the reason that we're going to do that is that when we run in Firebug, we have a console window, which is like an interactive window where we can just type in JavaScript commands and execute them immediately to get a result. So here's our list control. And then the first thing that we need to do is get a pointer to the list control. So the dialog object in this case is DLG1, which is the DLG1 is the default alias that is used when you run a component in the builder. So DLG1 underbar DLG object is really equivalent here to curly bracket DLG dot o b j e c t close curly brackets so this is our dialog object and we call the get control method to get a pointer to the list control so now we have a pointer to the list control and now let's go to this list and what we'll do is we'll actually uh, start from scratch we'll rerun the uh, component over here and now there are no rows selected and now i'm going to click on the fourth row first and then i'm going to click by holding control I'm going to click on the first row second. So I've got two rows selected right now. So let's go here and type in alert l o b j dot selection dot length. So and then run that. So we can see that this tells us that there are currently two rows selected. Now let's say we'd like to get the row number of the first row that was selected. So we'll go here and we'll type in 0. So selection is an array. So selection 0 is the first item in the array. So now we'll go ahead and we'll run that. And we see that that says 3. So this is telling us that row number 3, and this is 0 base, so this is row 0, 1, 2, 3. So this row here was the first row that was selected. And then if we go there and type in a 1, we're going to see that the second row that was is selected is row number 0. So this selection array is an array of the rows that were selected. So the next thing that we'd like to do is perhaps read data from the selected row. So there's another array uh, that the uh, list object exposes called selection data. So let's just, um, I'm going to just copy here from the clipboard and now paste into my console window here. So selection data is an array of the selected rows. So selection data 0 is the first row that was selected and dot first name is the value of the first name field in the first selected row. When I uh, click the uh, run button here you can see that I'm getting Amanda which is this value over there. So this dot selection data is giving me a data object for the first selected row and then dot first name is reading the first name property from that row so that's how I was able to get the first name field from the first selected row and of course if I go there and type in a 1 and then run that I'm going to get John which is the value in the uh, second uh, selected row so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing our video on some of the list methods for dealing with selected rows and reading data from the list object. And what we've shown here is how you can read data from the currently selected rows in the list. But what if we wanted to get the value of some arbitrary row number in the list? So in order to do that, we can use the getData method. So I'm going to copy another method here from the clipboard and uh, paste this in. So let's go there and paste this and then comment out that command over there. So the getData method allows you to get the data object for a given row in the list. And again, the uh, row number here is zero base. So this is going to get me the data for the first row. And if I go there, for example, and type in 
uh, row number one there, this is going to be the second row. So this is no longer dealing with selected data, but it's just the data in the list itself, whether it's selected or not. So here what we're going to do is we're going to get the data object for the second row and then show the value of the city column. So let's go ahead now and click the Run button. And you can see that basically we get back New York. So here we basically said we're going to get the value of the uh, city column from the second row in the list. But as you recall, this list was configured to return last name values. So instead of passing in a row number to get data, we can also pass in a value. So if I uh, type here, for example, Clark, C-L-A-R-K, and then the Run button, there you can see it's returning Boston because what's happened here is get data. The get data method has returned a data object for the row that returns Clark, which would be this row over here, Nancy Clark Boston, and therefore the value of Boston was returned by this uh, dot city property over here. So the difference between using dot selection data array and the get data method is that dot selection data is an array of data that corresponds to the selected rows in the list and there may be zero or more rows selected whereas get data allows you to get data from any arbitrary row in the list so get data is one of the methods for reading a, a value from a row in the list but you can also use the get value method which we'll demonstrate now so here you can see we've actually typed in the command now and the get value method which reads a value from a control can either take the name of a control or in, in case of a list control can use the prefix list colon colon which indicates we're going to read a value from a list then list which is the ID of the list so in this case the list is actually called list as well and then colon colon city and then that's the value of the column from the list that you want to read and then you can type in also an optional row number so if you don't pass in the optional row number it's going to read the value from the uh, first row that is currently selected so in this case right now there are no rows in the list selected so when we run this command we're going to get undefined because there is no currently a row selected if I go there and click say on the second row in the list and now run it you can see that city is New York but if I go there and I type in say a three over there now I'm going to be reading the value from the fourth row that's one two three four I should be getting Chicago and in fact there I do I get Chicago over there so the get value method is another way for reading data from get value method but the get data method which is a method of the actual list object itself rather than get value which is a method of the dialog object the get data method may be more flexible than the the get value method so it's really a user preference to decide which method works best for you under different circumstances thanks